So, yeah, my name is Maxwell. I'm going to talk to you about a course that I delivered at Maseno University just last semester. I, um, I work for a company called uh, EduTab Africa that uh, I co-founded with a few friends, and I'm also a master's degree student of information technology at Maseno University, which is the university that uh, brags about being the only university around the world that sits right at the equator, because part of the university is northern hemisphere, the other part of the university is uh, southern hemisphere. So, yeah, about EduTab is a company that was uh, created by me and two other people, uh, which seeks to be an enabler of uh, better use of technology in education, research, uh, agriculture, um, and of the last few years, we've been uh, starting to provide Moodle services where we work with host companies to provide Moodle instances for clients. Now, uh, before it got to where we started offering uh, Moodle services, um, you know, as human beings, we are naturally storytellers. So I'm going to tell you about my Moodle journey. So I started interacting with Moodle about nine years ago during my undergraduate um, course where we had one HIV course that was mandatory to everyone and it was obvious the best thing to do was to offer it online. And I have to say, Maseno has had a very good e-learning system. Uh, and it has, it's been one of the universities from Kenya that has a very good e-campus. So everybody around the university, we were doing that course online. So that was about nine years ago. Then after finishing my undergraduate in 2015, then I joined a company where I started being the technical guy who installed Moodle on Raspberry Pis and taking them to schools and you know down the road not really caring much about how it's being used or things like that. And remember, during my undergraduate times, I didn't know that it was called Moodle. It's only when I started installing this that I learned, oh, actually this is Moodle. Fast forward to when we started uh, EduTab Africa, we now started working with um, more people from around the world and from around Africa especially. We've worked with the uh, Association of African Universities uh, Inclusive Education, the people we just made a presentation with before here. Uh, and now we are working with Inclusive Education to use Moodle for um, children, PP1, PP2. So basically, the range of things at EduTab that we do with Moodle is from you know, children, primary, high school, all the way to higher education. So that's more like you know, the, the journey with Moodle, having that experience over time, um, and because as postgraduate students at the university, we are given diploma courses to teach, I decided that because the diploma students at Maseno did not have any online course at that point in time, which is just a few months ago, I decided from experience, let me create one course that is going to you know, enrich their, their, um, their experience learning online because as you've seen from starting interacting with Moodle as you know, someone who doesn't know about it, installing it, uh, working with people in instruction design. So I decided to do this course and we agree that it's going to be like a benchmark for you know, uh, other online courses that will be developed for the diploma students. Um, before doing this course, definitely I really needed to understand the students. So I had first to do a few pre-course activities which happened uh, more like a month earlier on. So I developed a very quick website which was like a website containing information about the course. The course was called Management Information System. And this was basically providing <clears throat> information about the outline of the course, uh, the outcomes of the course and things like that, contact details and things like that and also how the different 10 weeks will be delivered. I also needed to understand the situation with the students. So I did a very quick survey, which was taken by the students. And after the survey, um, I definitely developed the materials. I did finally student enrollment and of course orientation. So this is an IT class and these statistics I'm sure do not surprise you that much because we only have seven females uh, out of the 37 um, students in that class. In my own class, um, during my undergraduate, we had only four ladies out of about 35. So it's, it's, you know, and this is six years down the line. So we need to be working towards getting more female into IT. 
And this, um, and definitely this uh, survey was, was, was done using Google Forms. Huh? So one of the things I needed to understand, because this is going to be a hybrid course, um, I needed to understand the kind of devices the students have, so that, that then informs me how I develop these materials. And one of the interesting bits is that all the students, 37 of them, reported having a smartphone, so which made my work easier because now I knew they could use their mobile phones. And then something else uh, that was reported, about 94% of them had access to a desktop or a laptop, which means at least we had enough devices to have this course. But then this number, 94.6, could be really attributed to the fact that we import a lot of used computers and desktops and things like that. So the prices of these things are not as high and people decide to buy those that, uh, that they can afford because as IT students without a laptop, again, it's a big challenge. And so I was not very surprised by that number. I also wanted to check with them what they were most comfortable with um, in terms of communication around the course. And again, it didn't surprise me that much because a lot of them say they, they preferred WhatsApp because WhatsApp is very common and this could also be attributed to their behavior and also the demographic, which a lot of these are just from Form 4, uh, high school leavers, so they use WhatsApp a lot. And a very small number talked of emails. And this is linked then to, at the end of the course, I did a post-course evaluation. And a lot of them mentioned that they used mobile phones to access learning materials. Now, the WhatsApp bit was used in collaboration with other Moodle tools for messaging during the course. And as I will tell you, um, the next slide is that maybe they may have selected WhatsApp because they did not know about other messaging or communication tools that are available within Moodle because as you can see, 81% of them had never taken any other course before. And the 18.9% that had a course done before, these were some of the students I interacted with them before and said, actually, you can try this course in Coursera. You can do this on EDX. You can do this on Udemy. Now, in terms of internet access, um, well, in Kenya, internet cost is dropping because definitely there's, there has been a lot of laying down on infrastructure and government putting a lot of effort to reach different places to have fiber and things like that. So a lot of them mentioned they have had, uh, you know, they used more than 50 megabytes in a week, which means, you know, they could basically get down a cost that like 3, 5 MB, download it to their phone and, and use it. And a lot of them didn't have, you know, access to public Wi-Fi. Uh, that means, you know, they lived in hostels that did not provide that. So about the cost itself, um, this was a 10-week course uh, with two physical meetings, and this was in between like fifth week, fifth week and you know like 10th week when the course was ending, and the interactive materials that I had were mostly SCOM, but for people who would like to have things printed, I had PDF for them. So in terms of an uh, enrollment and orientation, because most of them had not taken any online course before. I made a video for them that uh, you know, showed how to navigate both the web and using the Moodle app to download uh, content, navigating it, and using the content offline. And about the course, every week there were different mixed um, of assessments, which included master quizzes, timed quizzes, and things like that. And the feedback for the course, for the improvement of the course, I decided not to use Moodle to collect it because people knew if I'm logged in and I say this to the lecturer, and you know, in terms of cultural issues that, you know, students, there are things that you shouldn't say to a lecturer, then I decided to use Padlets, which were completely anonymous to receive very honest feedback. And some of the things that the student mentioned, they really enjoyed very, very much. Um, one was the discussion forums. As, uh, one of the quotes is talking about the ability for them to interact was really, really appreciated by them. And also the timed quizzes, because before you do the timed quizzes, you had to do the mastery quizzes. And the mastery quizzes, you could do them as many times as you want. And they were you know, like randomized questions. So they felt good that they could do mastery quizzes so much and then you know, have the timed quizzes, um, which 
could measure their level of understanding. And one of the units that I'm going to talk about in the next one minute is they said they really enjoyed a topic called data security, privacy, and protection. And this is a unit that I used comics. Uh, in Kenya, we normally call them memes. Uh, you know, these funny things that people share on uh, WhatsApp and things like that. And part of the reason I think uh, that they enjoy this is because it's very, very relatable to what they send each other all the time, you know, funny memes and characters like this. And also the fact that something has had, had happened in Kenya which um, was related to issues of data security and privacy that got the government stopping one of the projects that they had taken. And so they found this topic, um, you know, very, very meaningful for them. Now, coming down to our context, as you might have uh, people who are here before, we work in mostly places where offline is really appreciated, and I wanted to check how much they used the Moodle app, because having you know, the orientation course to show them how to do this, I was really hoping they would use this. And 91.3% of them said they used Moodle app, and the big things why they used was because it was free and easy to use, and also, from the comments I got from the end, it's easy to use, it's less data costly, which comes back to the, you know, appreciating, appreciating the fact that this is offline. You can download notes, you know, while online and study offline. It made work easy accessing notes offline. The resources were available when I wanted to study, and dot, 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 good notes were available offline. So the fact that this was Available of, offline, it was really appreciated by them. Remember, this was their first time, most of them taking an online course. And when I asked them at the end whether they would want to take another online course, everyone said yes, because again, flexibility was key. Some of these students work, some of these students have uh, you know, part-time jobs and things like that, and they also don't want to keep coming to school sometimes and lectures don't happen. And um, one of the interesting one was the last one, which is, um, you know, they say they are able to balance the academic work and study. And uh, of course, challenges were initial weeks were very challenging for them. And while they were having devices, they want like the eye and devices. So sometimes they could delete some topics so that they can get new topics in. And that brings my presentation to an end. Thank you very much. So what's next? Are you going to be able to teach another class? Are they going to in use your template for the going forward? Yeah, so that's, that's a very good question. Thank you very much. So the next plans from this is improve this course, and that becomes a benchmark for more development of other online courses for these diploma students. Yeah. Hi, Max. Thank you so much. i um, just wondering, so are you planning on doing some kind of training of trainers so that more people than you can do courses? Yeah, so a lot of postgraduate students get to um, teach these diploma students, and some of those are within my class. A lot of them don't have any experience with Moodle, but with this course and the improvement we're going to make, I'm looking at the next three semesters, other people being able to take up this and using this as a benchmark to have these similar courses for the students. 